Hey everyone, welcome back to my DIY uh, CNC build series. So today we're doing limit switches. Um, in the last series of videos we've gotten the y-axis running, we've got the x-axis running, and we have the z-axis running. So these all move, they move nicely uh, on their own. Um, the only thing is that they don't know where they are at any given time uh, in space. I mean, when I turn the machine on, it just assumes that the point that it's at is the zero point which is a perfectly reasonable thing for it to assume, but it doesn't know uh, anything else about, you know, the, the rest of the ex extents of the machine. So I can very easily just run this into its end stops if I just tell it to move, you know, more than it actually has space to move. Um, and there's nothing that will stop it uh, at all, either hardware-based or um, software-based. So it'll just crash <laughs> into these, the motors will start skipping or the belts will jump or stretch or whatever. Um, but yeah, uh, there's nothing to stop it doing that. Um, so mostly the way I've done it up to now is everything I've designed, I've, I've positioned it somewhere sensible and I've checked the coordinate space and measured everything out so that I know that it's not going to hit any of its stops, it's just going to work inside its um, kind of its build volume. So. One part, one way to you know get around this issue, it not knowing where it is in space, is to add in a homing system. So the homing system is basically, uh, in this case, it'll, it'll use limit switches. So what it will do is it'll drive in one direction for each axis. So it'll be the positive direction. In my case, I'm going to set it up. It'll drive in the positive direction at a certain speed until it hits a set of physical switches, which I have set up here on the y-axis already. So these physical limit switches. So it'll move, move, move until it hits its physical switches and then it will know that it's at one max position so from that the machine can compute where is it's like where its zero position is based on you telling the machine okay if you hit that end stop switch you've got 40 millimeters of travel from there and that's you know the bounds of, of, of your travel and you do that with each axis and so now the machine can know where it is in space, or what it, what its volume is, and uh, all the areas that it can move inside that. Um, so, I am going to continue working on the limit switches. As I said, I already have the y-axis done. I have some more switches here that I need to configure for the z and the x-axis. So I need to work out. I'm going to 3D print some brackets and stuff. Figure out how to mount them, and you know, connect up the wires and stuff. Um, I want to have the physically mounted and I'm happy with the positions of all the switches that I can they're uh, consistently able to activate them in nice positions uh, then I will wire them up and then program the machine to uh, recognize them um, so that it knows what to do so it can do its homing sequence and also it can have them as its hard limits um, so yeah that is what I'm going to do next oh another another actually before I go the these little switches are really nice. They came on these uh, printed circuit boards and I don't know if you'll be able to see them very well, but they come with little spaces on them uh, to put surface mount resistors and capacitors so that you can make your own, uh, you can choose your own values so you can tune your own um, RC circuit, RC filter circuit uh, on the switches, which is really, really cool. Um, now I'm going to just wire them up as they are without the RC uh, filter, they do work without the, the filter components put in. Um, I don't know if they'll, if they'll work properly, uh, maybe the, the bounciness in the switch, I have to see uh, how that ends up working, but it's mostly because I don't have any surface mount components and I have to go and buy a bunch uh, to do this, um, which, you know, if I don't have to, <laughs> I won't. So uh, I'm going to try them out anyway, as they are. And uh, yeah, see how that goes.
Okay, we've got some limit switches mounted, so um happy enough with them, they're, they're, they're okay. Um, the Z-axis one is, I'm pretty happy with that, that's fine. Um, we have the X-axis one here, which works works perfectly fine. Um, the only thing I'm not really happy with this is the this mounting plate that I've made uh, to mount it on. Um, it's sort of a trade-off here, I could have mounted the limit switch onto the gantry here and positioned it somewhere back here um, and have it just touch the side of the side of this piece but um, I kind of made the decision that I wanted all the wires just to be off of this the gantry itself I didn't really want to have trailing wires because at the moment it doesn't have any and I think that's kind of nice so I've put this here for now and um, it, it <laughs> physically works but it just means I lose um, uh, I think 25 millimeters or so off the travel on the x-axis which isn't great, but is what it is. I'll uh, I'll see how it goes. See if I really want that space back. You know, I can try and redesign it. I can get some maybe some different limit switches that I could mount up this way, and the switch would just be sticking out. The board would be there, and the switch would stick out there, which would <laughs> be a little bit better. Um. So yeah, that's mechanically that's the limit switches finished, uh, and they all work, which is nice. My Y axis. Yep, that'll work. Cool. So, next thing, I have to wire them all up. Um, and yeah, I'll wire them all up. And then I have to do some software stuff. So, I need to figure out the configuration bits for getting the homing done on the machine and programming the travel limits and all of that. And yeah, so I'm going to do that, give it a test, and then see if I can. Put a piece of paper in and get it to just draw something without me having to like locate it um, manually and see if the positions are all are good confession time uh, I had a bit of a comedy of errors um, <laughs> getting this set up to where it is now so um, you saw me make this uh, little breakout board earlier on so I could jump the, the limit switches over to the controller board um, basically I did it wrong <laughs> so I um, wired the switches wrong so and then tried to disassemble it uh, ended up having to just uh, rip the whole thing apart and um, build it again so I did that um, but then I also discovered another strange issue, um, which is, so basically I think this shield is for Gerbil version 0 0.8 and prior, um, and in the newer versions of Gerbil, which is from I think 0 0.9 onwards, this is 1.1 that I'm running, um, basically you've got the Z-axis limit switch pins and the spindle speed pins have been flipped. So I was kept kept trying to run the Z axis and it was just not working. Um, and I couldn't figure it out, it was tearing my hair out. So I think I have that fixed now. I think I have it all wired up correctly. So I'm gonna hit the homing command and see what happens. Hopefully it'll home itself. So far, so good. Oh, here we go. It's the last one. And it works. <laughs> How about that? That is fantastic. Couldn't be happier with that. Um, okay, so it homes itself now. So what? I gotta go make it do stuff with this. 
homing sequence in place, set up all the references correctly, do some cam and make it go from scratch, home itself, do a whole thing and then return back to its home again. And then I'm going to call this that we have a fully functioning three axis CNC machine minus a cutting head or a laser or something like that. But that'll be in the next thing. All right, it's demo time for the fully functioning autonomous pen platter, which is the first most useful thing that this CNC machine can actually practically do. Um, so for this, I've gotten a special treat of got permission from a very good uh, artist friend of mine, Laura. You can find her at Laura Merclar on Instagram. I'll put a link in the description uh, to reproduce one of her pieces of art um, with the machine. So basically what is kind of a convoluted process, I took a, um, a bitmap file that Laura had given me of the piece of art, was able to do um, was able to do uh, tracing on that to then generate a set of vectors. Then from that set of vectors, I was able to import that into my into FreeCAD, <laughs> and then from FreeCAD, I was able to use the CAM package to generate a tool path from that set of vectors to then create G-code, which this machine would be able to interpret to be able to draw the picture. So what's going to happen now is for the demo, I'm going to click the run button. The machine is going to since I've set it to this random starting location, it's going to home itself to its known base location. And then from there, it's going to move to its starting point that I've set up in the cam tool. It's going to draw the picture and then it's going to go back home again. So with all that said, let's click the button and watch it go. So I wasn't supposed to do that. <laughs> uh, I think I did have a few layers of paper here and it um, seems like I've uh, <laughs> lost some paper <laughs> or I've, I've, as I've taken away uh, some old drawing that was done on it, I've lost some thickness. Um, so I'm gonna have to stick a fresh sheet of paper down. Please hold. Okay, let's try that one more time with feeling.
And so there we have it. Is our demo over? You might notice that some of the orientations changed. There was a bit of a jump cut in there because uh, I did some, well, I had some, firstly, the machine messed up a little bit and also my camera messed up, so I had to reshoot it. <laughs> but essentially what, what you notice, it wasn't actually the machine's fault, it was more the operator's fault. Um, in the first part of the video where the pen started moving, it wasn't drawing anything. Essentially what that is, is the, the tool's Z height offset was wrong. Um, so it, like with, with drawing with paper, especially with this type of pen where you've got like a, it's a really fine tip on it. So it doesn't have much like compression or anything like that. You need to get it like really finely just touching the surface of the paper. I had been drawing on some paper and I'd taken sheets off and put sheets back on. So the thickness had actually changed. I've piled up a few sheets of paper here to give me a smoother surface because this wood has a grain on it so that it would, that would show through on the, on the picture. Um, so this is, I basically had to figure out that, re-figure out that Z offset and get this drawn out. But the important part is the machine worked perfectly. So it started from an arbitrary point somewhere in the middle of the, of the of its working plane, moved back to its home, then I click go, it figured out where it needed to move to to start the drawing, did the whole drawing and brought itself back home again. So I call that an absolute success um, and it is by far up to now the most useful thing that this machine can actually practically do and I get a cool little piece of art out of it. So I have to thank my good friend Laura again for allowing me to reproduce one of her brilliant pieces. Um, if you can't tell, it's a chicken with sort of a human ear. <laughs> um, I absolutely love it. Um, okay, so I think that's about the end of this for now. And um, the next part we're going to do is we're going to get the spindle. Um, it's on order. It's coming. So it's going to be mounted on here. And in the next video, you guys are going to get to see this machine cutting something, which to me is both incredibly exciting and also utterly terrifying. Um, so yeah, that's going to come up in the next video. Thanks everyone for watching this video. As always, if you like the video, remember to like, subscribe to the channel, share with your friends. And if you want to help support the work that I'm doing on this channel, you find a link in the description to my Patreon. Only the money that comes in there will go towards making bigger and better projects in the future. Thanks for watching, guys.